Hey guys, welcome back. Today we're checking out the Stone Brewing Neverending Haze IPA. <laughs> So the Never Ending Haze is a low ABV, hazy IPA. Um, it's got this crazy kind of like 70s inspired can art. I really like the, uh, the way this looks. This reminds me of uh, like skateboarding back in the day. I like the skateboarding magazines, the text, I don't know, something about it just really reminds me of this. It reminds me of that 70s show. Oh yeah, that's a good one too, yeah. Same font, I think. Kind of does, kind like of the, the circles kind of remind me, yeah. yeah. I gotcha. But it's a 4% hazy IPA, so you know that this one's gonna be an interesting one because how are you gonna do that? So, into the stone glasses it go. So then technically this is like a session IPA. Yeah, I guess you could say it would be a session hazy. Yeah. Which I'm all about, man. You know me. Uh, it has a bunch of text on the back, but I'm not going to read all this. This is too crazy. There's a lot never-ending about IPAs around Stone, beginning with Stone IPA, the very first most popular West Coast-style IPA on the planet, to our celebrated double IPAs, blah, 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 blah. I don't know. I mean, I read it, and I really didn't... It didn't give me an explanation as to why they particularly brewed a low ABV, hazy IPA. There was this whole fear of missing out culture back in 2017, 2018, when the style was getting really popular, and then people were lining up around the block for hazy, the, the latest hazy IPA. And now they're just everywhere. Um, but why they decided to jump on that bandwagon now, mm -hmm. anyone's guess, but I'm kind of glad they did. I like hazy IPAs personally. I know a lot of people are kind of over them by now, but I don't know, it's a style I like. Still love those hazy IPAs. Mm -hmm. Hazy girl for me. They're good. Now I've noticed how kind of dark. Yeah, it's not a light beer at all. No. I, I was expecting a, something a little bit more bright color, brightly, uh, you know, like a more popping. This this kind of reminds me of a uh, old water or something, <laughs> some, like water you'd find in uh, a third world country or something. I just think of like surfing in California um, in the seventies with like a Polaroid camera, take a video of your friends when I look at this can. And then the beer comes out and it's this darker kind of, you know, hazy IPA. Lacing is kind of non-existent, just kind of falls right down. Yeah. Um, but uh, let's take a sniff test and see what we got on the nose. It smells kind of dark to me. It doesn't have that bright citrusy smell. It kind of has this dankiness to it. Yeah. Um, it definitely has, uh, like, for sure, that, that citrusy character thing happening. It's got like a, mm, like a, almost a, a piney zest to it, and a little bit of orange, tangerine maybe. As one would expect yeah. from Stone, I mean, this is, that's what they do. Like, all their beer, to me, has a citrus punch to it, which is like, it's a pretty de facto standard of the style. Um, they've made it that way. So anyways, you ready to dive in? Should we should we try it? Yeah. Okay. Let's do it. Getting a lot of bitterness. More so than what I normally expect or what I normally have in a hazy beer. Yeah. That's another one of Stone's trademarks, I mm -hmm. think, is bitterness. They, they like to bitter things up. Um, like the color we were talking about, it doesn't taste quite as bright and forward as I was expecting yeah. it to, given as well the can art and how light it is and playful, and, you know, uh, the, the artwork seems to be. Um, yeah, it it's definitely has this, has this danky, piney, bitter kind of flavor to it, um, but that's followed quickly by tangerine notes and this sort of like, citrusy character. It's not that bitter. It, it kind of lingers for a few seconds in the back of your throat and then it quickly washes away nicely. But it's incredible how this is supposedly a 4% beer. Like this, to me, tastes like a 7% beer. I don't think it's as bitter as something like a Founders All Day IPA. It, well, it lingers more. I don't think yeah, it might, yeah. this might maybe not as bitter as this, but it lingers more. 
This is probably more bitter, but it cleans up faster. But yeah, still crazy how they can fit that much bitterness into a 4% beer in the first place without it just overtaking everything. That's, it's pretty incredible. I think I was just expecting like super, super haze, but like a light yellow colored IPA. That's what I thought it was gonna be. Yeah. It's definitely got like this beef behind it yeah. that I wasn't expecting. But if this is a summer beer, mm -hmm. I almost want something a little bit lighter, I would feel like, you know? Yeah. I would almost gravitate more towards a Kolsch or something like that, um, or another hazy IPA rather than, than something this danky. Overall, I like this beer. It's got a citrusy thing happening. I'd probably buy it again. Uh, I don't think it's gonna become a mainstay in my fridge, though, in the summer, if I can even find it in the summer. I think this is a limited release beer. Yeah, it seems like it's a winter beer. Which so. is weird because one, it's winter and it's a hazy IPA. Two, it's a 4% hazy IPA. And three, if you're gonna make a beer that's 4%, that has this much body and this much flavor, why make it a limited run? Yeah. Why make it seasonal? That doesn't seem to make any sense that's to me. True. But I don't know, I'm not in command. All right, guys, if you're interested in more craft beer reviews or craft beer event coverage, be sure to subscribe and hit that little bell icon. Until next time, stay crafty. Cheers.